This is my Voron 2.4, which is probably one of the most hyped 3D printers over the last two years. And I finally built one. Owning a Voron wasn't easy in the past, yet this finally changed. However, should you still build one in 2022? Let's find out more. Guten Tag everybody, I'm Stefan and welcome to CNC Kitchen. This video is sponsored by Voxel PLA. Check out their reliable yet affordable PLA Pro selling for only $16.99 a spool and if you order two or more, you'll get free shipping in the US. Voxel PLA engineered this material for reliable operation in their print farm where they run 150 printers 24-7 and are now releasing it with five colors to the public. They've got a cool white, gray, black and blue material and the color I like most is their Fire Red PLA. So if you need to restock your filament, visit them at voxelpla.com and if you need more than 10 spools, they are offering bulk discounts. Thanks to Voxel PLA for sponsoring this video. If you are only the slightest bit interested in 3D printing, I'm sure you have heard the name Voron Printer over the last two years, because those machines combine everything an enthusiast 3D printer user wants to have on their machine. Core XY kinematic, linear rails on all axes, clipper with input shaping for super fast yet accurate printing, a beefy milled aluminum bed for perfect first layers, professional electronics, drag chains, light enclosures, air filter and so much more. Yet, you can't buy a Voron off the shelf. In this video, I'll talk about how owning a Voron today is way easier than it used to be. Is the hype deserved and how relevant a Voron still is in the age of high-speed printers like the Bamboo Lab X1 that you can buy ready to print off the shelf for less than a Voron 2.4 costs. So what is Voron in the first place? Voron is an open source project around a group of very talented engineers that tried to design non-compromised 3D printers since 2015. Over the years, a very active community formed around the project that used the machines, provide feedback and created a ton of mods. There are several Voron designs available, from the tiny yet capable Voron Zero that I built last year, to the latest large print volume Voron 2.4 R2 that I built for this video. Yes, I had to build one, because Voron is not a company selling their printers, it's a project that designs them and provides sourcing guides to buy the proper components to build them. And this is the reason, together with component prices from $700 to over $1500, that there aren't that many around. Building a Voron requires time and skill, in my case around 30 hours of assembly and wiring, knowledge because you still need to design on some parts yourself, like the hot end for example, and dedication because even though with the base configuration you get a working machine, tuning it to your needs is left up to you. This video already got way too long for my liking, so I had to skip some things and wasn't able to talk about everything. But if you have a question, want to share your experience or post your opinion, leave a comment. In the past you had to and Voron even recommended to source all of the parts individually by yourself, yet over the last two years more and more part kits got available, which makes building a Voron today way easier than it used to be. This limits of course the base customizability, but honestly I would have never built one myself if I had to order everything separately. I got and built the Voron 2.4 R2 kit from LDO, which currently sells for around $1350 depending on where you live and order from. All I've heard is that this kit is probably one of the best out in the wild for that price and LDO kindly provided it for this video. This kit is fortunately available from many resellers around the world, so you don't have to order from China and I put some links in the description. Just as a disclaimer, LDO sent me the kit free of charge, yet all the thoughts in here are my own and they even explicitly ask me to be completely open with feedback, positive and negative and this is something I highly honor. LDO didn't just throw random parts together, but included parts that work and fit the budget using the feedback from the Voron team. There are other Voron kit vendors around and I highly recommend to check out the Voron discord to find out if they are trustworthy or not. 
Already when buying the LDO kit, you learn a bit about one Voron philosophy, which is that you don't build the Voron, you build your Voron. So with the LDO kit, you can choose between different sizes, which is 250, 300 and 350 millimeter squared build area and a wide variety of frame colors to adjust the color scheme to what you like. The smaller sizes are at first cheaper, but also more sturdy for higher speeds and more energy efficient, yet of course smaller. I went for the middle ground and chose the 300mm model. The other thing you'll also need to decide yourself with the LDO kit is which hot end you'd like to use, because it doesn't come with one. Voron provides mounts for faders, E3D and slice engineering hot ends. I went with E3D's Revo Voron hotend because I had one and changing nozzles on it is so convenient and I also thought that the Voron will be a perfect platform to test the upcoming abrasion resistant obsidian nozzle. The other thing my dit didn't include, because they are currently very hard to source, is a Raspberry Pi which runs the web interface and the clipper firmware. Either you still have one, buy a new one for scalable prices, or what I would actually recommend is buying a used Raspberry Pi 3 on eBay, which is totally sufficient if you use the lightweight clipper interfaces, mainsail or fluid. Yet the LDO kit comes with some extra parts and mods, like a ton of handy adapter PCBs that sometimes require to slightly deviate from the standard manual, but LDO documented everything on their website. Besides the hardware and the electronics components, you'll also need the printed parts, which are usually not part of a kit. I could talk for hours about the awesome design of these parts. Not only do they all follow a common design language, but they are all designed for additive manufacturing. This means that none of the parts need supports. And if some features do, supports are integrated in the STLs and easily removable. They apply all the tricks to even get complex bridges and holes to print, which just warms my heart, so kudos to the Voron team. They should be printed in ABS or other materials that are capable of handling the elevated temperatures in the chamber and at the stepper motors. Don't experiment like I did on my Voron Zero, where all the carbon fiber nylon parts creeped and deformed after no time, and stick with the Voron recommendations. I used Isan ABS Plus for all of the parts. Vorons are usually printed in a two color scheme. As mentioned before, you choose a frame color and then print the parts in a dominant color and the accent color. Suitable to my channel, I chose the blue frame with blue accent parts and a black base color. To print all of the parts, you need two rolls of the base color and one roll of the accent color. The full set of parts took me over 200 hours to print on my Prusa Mark III. If you don't have a printer at all or just one that's not capable of printing ABS, you can also use the printed forward program to purchase a full set of the parts at a very reasonable price. Probably also printed on a Voron, so fully follows the spirit of RepRap. Depending on your skill level and depending on which parts and part kit you use, building a Voron 2.4 will take you around 20 to 40 hours from start till the first print. The Voron team prepared a 300 page manual through which you are guided step by step. It explains the step very well with illustrations and short texts. For me it almost perfectly was on the level of depth I require and it didn't go as deep as for example a Prusa manual which documents each individual screw you have to tighten and how many gummy bears to eat while you do that. Don't get me wrong, the Prusa manuals make building one of their machines very approachable, but if you build a Voron you should have some prior knowledge on how 3D printers work, so condensing the manual down is totally okay. Oh and uh, talking about manual, you'll basically have 5 manuals. The 2.4 manual, the optional stealth burner toolhead manual, LDO's additional wiring guide, LDO's necessary and optimal mod guide, and Voron software installation guide. So familiarize with them before you start to not miss anything, as I almost did. I also recommend downloading the CAD model of the printer if something isn't completely clear and join the Discord if you have questions during the assembly. Oh, and I also only realized after talking to the Voron team that the manual is for the 250mm Voron 2.4, so sometimes the number of the T-nuts or proportions didn't match my machine. 
The build itself was super pleasant. All of the parts in my LDO kit were clearly labeled and sorted by category. Extrusions were cleanly cut, drilled and tapped. It was also nice to see that LDO even included matte black acrylic sheets with chamfers because they are way less prone to fingerprints and dirt than glossy ones. The kit of course came with the suitable LDO stepper motors with gate belts. The linear slides were not by Highwin, but LDO sourced and branded their own set. They look and felt very suitable for all I can tell after cleaning them from their shipping gunk and re-greasing them, which is by the way clearly mentioned in the manual. The cable chains are also not by Igus, yet you can open them, which makes wiring way easier. I had the feeling that LDO didn't choose the highest quality components to keep the price reasonable, but still went with good mid-tier options that will suit the needs of most. The kit came with the parts for the Clockwork 1 extruder, including original Bontech gears. Though if you want to go for the latest Clockwork 2 extruder, you only need to purchase a new stepper motor. LDO told me that they are planning to include the new stepper, yet the kits that are at the resellers currently still come with the old one. To be super honest, I didn't film a ton of the assembly process because I wanted to enjoy it. And I really did that. If you're interested in a full video build series of the LDO kit, then check out Narrow3D. His videos are also a great resource if you're just stuck somewhere. Most of the parts came together perfectly. Some of the assemblies were just beautiful to look at. And I had a ton of fun during the whole process. I didn't have to rework any print and was also super happy to see that they use brass threaded inserts whenever they made sense. CNC kitchen.store by the way. First I assembled the frame and installed the z-axis rails and the super heavy aluminum bed with the pre-installed heater mat and magnetic sheet. Then I put together the XY gantry and installed it to the frame. Then I came to the tool head where I made several choices. First, I didn't go with the standard inductive probe that often suffers temperature drift problems, but went with the clicky probe for which the parts are included in the LDO kit. This is a micro switch probe that's magnetically fixed to the print head during probing and then parked in the back of the printer. Then I built the Clockwork 1 extruder and opted for the new stealth burner tool head with my Revo Voron. Since the Revo is currently limited to around 15 cubic millimeters a second extrusion rate, you should also check out the other compatible high flow hotends if you primary want to print with larger nozzles. The whole mechanical assembly was just like Lego for adults. Yet I would still only recommend the build to someone who enjoys that task, because not only do you need to spend a good 30 hours on the process, but you also need a bit of engineering thinking to understand the manual and get everything square and running smoothly. And once you're finished with the mechanical assembly, you'll need to wire everything. In the past, this was one of the most tedious tasks because running all of the wires separately and crimping connectors was quite a pain. The LDO kit also makes this quite easy because it includes pre-made wiring harnesses with all of the suitable connectors already crimped, saving you a ton of time, mistakes and headaches during the process. It still requires a bit of basic understanding of electronics and you will also need to do a bit of wiring on the main side, which can be potentially very dangerous. So if you don't feel comfortable doing that, either don't build a Voron at all or make sure you have someone who can assist you. Overall routing the wires was pretty simple and the tool had PCB as well as DIN rails in the electronics compartment together with the cable channels made the wiring very clean. The heat bed runs on mains, is properly grounded and thermally fused and uses an SSR for switching. The power supply is from Meanwell and the mainboard is a Big Tree Tech Octopus with TMC2209 drivers. The only thing I can complain about is that my power supply didn't have any protection over the mains terminal, but as soon as the lower cover is installed, shouldn't be a problem anymore. I didn't install side panels, doors and the top cover yet, since my first plan was to print a significant amount of PLA, where any enclosure will be bad for cooling. And remember what I said in the beginning? I'm building my Voron and not the Voron. Yet as soon as I'll start testing the Obsidian nozzle from E3D with different carbon fiber nylons, I'll install them. I already put together the Nevermore activated charcoal filter for which the necessary fan is also included in the kit. From here on it was simply following the guide on flashing the clipper interface mainsail onto the SD card, installing it into the Raspberry Pi and hoping for the best when turning on the printer for the first time. Mine didn't lose any magic smoke by the way.
Then I compiled the clipper firmware, put that onto an SD card and installed that in the main board. This sounds scarier and more complicated than it is because there are easy to follow instructions on the Voron website and if you're still getting stuck, there are great videos by Teaching Tech to check out. Finally, I used the config file from the LDO website, ran PID tuning for the bat plus the hot end and was basically ready for the first test print. Since this is a fully open system, you can use any slicer that you like, but since I create most of my G-code in Prusa Slicer, I went with this piece of software that already has profiles for the Voron included. I still had to do some manual configurations to get the Clippy probe and mesh bed leveling working, but then it was ready to go. I, by the way, posted my config in my website article if you want to take a look at it. A quick first layer test showed very promising results and the measured unevenness of the bed was only plus minus 0.1 millimeters, which is probably more a result of a deformed gantry than a warped bed. The first prints that I made came out very nice. I had good bed adhesion after a first proper clean of the flex bed with some dish soap and a really great looking texture on the bottom of the parts. One of the highlight features of Clipper firmware is input shaping, where the movements of the axis are slightly altered to avoid resonances. The LDO kit includes an accelerometer board that you can connect to the Raspberry Pi and then attach to the print head. With this you can run an automatic vibration test to find the resonance frequency and then put these values into the firmware. This allows for faster printing due to higher possible accelerations, yet with less artifacts and less chance of skipped steps in the motors. I haven't taken this to the limit yet, but even now it is already able to print very nicely looking parts at speeds way above what I know from normal bad slingers. Together with a strong part cooling fan of the Stealth Burner tool head, this allows me to easily print my parts 50 or 100% faster than on my Mark III with standard profiles, which makes this machine so efficient in use. The infamous Lumpy Bumpy Vase test, that has a ton of very short movements, also wasn't a problem for Clipper and it handled it without any stuttering. For the time I've been testing the machine now, I can say that I'm really happy with it. Yet it and also the Voron kit aren't without some minor things I have to critique. The performance so far was great, I had barely any failures and the quality of the parts is without a ton of tuning in materials and profiles really good. The mechanical design of the printer is rock solid, sometimes even looks over engineered but in the end is exactly what you'd expect of a machine what will set you back a good $1500. Quad gantry level will make sure that the gantry is always perfectly aligned to the bed. Each of the belts can be nicely adjusted for proper tension and the linear rails make everything super rigid. There are some things I still miss or where I struggled with. The Voron 2.4 has everything, yet misses a filament runout sensor in the standard configuration, which I would have liked to see with such a large build volume. When I printed my Stormtrooper helmet, I wasn't sure if I miss a couple of grams of material on the spool and a sensor would have given me way more confidence here. In the end, it wasn't a problem because the print failed before it finished, because the standard LDO config limits the z-axis to 260 millimeters, whereas many shops advertise it to be 300 millimeters. I could squeeze out maybe 20 millimeters more, but 300 millimeters in total is tough. Then there's the nozzle sensor. The Voron 2.4 measures the nozzle length before each print to compensate for thermal expansion. This is a great idea, yet I still had to slightly adjust the C offset regularly, probably because oozing filament messed up the measurement. There are easy ways around that problem, like a cleaning station, yet this annoyed me a little. Then there are some minor things I struggled with on the LDO kit. My LED and one fan wire was a bit too short. One grub screw of a Bontech gear was missing and I had to grind down another one, which was quite a pain. Yet there were plenty of spares for the rest of the fasteners that you don't need to worry if you lose one. But I think the most serious problem was that I had a ton and in my opinion too much drag in the reverse Bowden tube that was included by LDO. I'm not sure if it was the material or a kink in the hose but this could cause serious headaches for some and I replaced it right away when I noticed it. Since noise is something I also critique on many other machines I'll also do it here. My Voron 2.4 is not a quiet printer. Far away from a Mark III for example. The fans are quite noticeable because they are rather beefy and in my configuration all the stepper models aren't quite as well to give them the proper torque for reliable operation. 
This is a critique on high level and something most won't care about on such an industrial machine. Everything else was great and you could notice that LDO tried to get feedback from the Voron team to create a kit that met the quality standards of Voron. I can seriously recommend this kit because it will make the process of building a Voron way more enjoyable as it was in the past. Yet the question that remains is if you should still go through the hassle of building a Voron and spend more than $1500 in a time where you can buy machines like a Bamboo Lab X1 for even less than that which comes fully built and working out of the box and might to a certain degree even allow you to print faster. So is the hype around the Voron real? In a way I think yes. The machine is so well designed and built that this can be a reliable workhorse printing almost any material you throw at it and if you do the necessary tuning it will also be able to print significantly faster than other regular machines at a noticeably better quality. Still, I think some of the hype comes due to the fact that owning a Voron wasn't easy because it required dedication and skill to build one. So anyone who had a Voron was in kind of an elite club and everyone who hadn't one desired to be in that club which definitely fueled the hype. But let's see how the easier availability due to nice kits like the LDO one and who knows maybe even pre-built machines will do to that hype. Excuse the comparison right here, but in a way the hype and the community involvement around the Voron is a bit similar to the Endo 3s. Of course they are in a way different price category and do have way different capabilities right out of the box. Yet both fuel this community involvement with mods and customization options which is part of the hype. People build their machines, know every scratch, kink and setting optimization and therefore develop a kind of a bond to the printer. And here comes the Bamboo Lab X1 which is beside the smaller print volume a probably almost as capable machine but in a way a boring machine. You don't assemble it, you are supposed to use the slicer and you can't really mod it. So it lacks all of the joy of tinkering with the machine but I don't say that this is a bad thing because many might not enjoy that and need a printer as a tool and not a project. And this is what the Bamboo Lab is and what probably also Prusa's upcoming XL will be. Good tools, yet a bit boring. So there are different target audiences. If you want to build your machine, if you want full control in terms of spare parts, configuration, software and whatnot, yet still own a very capable tool. Seriously consider a Voron or also similar kit machines like a Red Rig. It has never been easier to get one. Yet if you're only looking for a tool and can't afford to spend 50, 100 or even more hours to build one, take a look at capable pre-builds like the Bamboo Lab X1 or others that suit your wallet and application. But what are your thoughts here? Is the Warren hype real and would you like to build one? Leave a comment down below! Thanks for watching everyone! I hope you found this video interesting. If you want to support my work, head over to Patreon or become a YouTube member. Also check out the other videos in my library. I hope to see you in the next one. Auf Wiedersehen and goodbye! <coughs> Buying a used raspberry... 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 raspberry...